Good evening, welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Joana Freitas. Our guest tonight is Albano Martins, an economist living in Macau for more than 30 years and someone who has played a major role in the welfare of animals here in the SAR. As the head of ANIMA, the Society for the Protection of Animals, Mr. Martins and his team are the key players in the reoming of hundreds of retired greyhounds, an issue that has been hitting the headlines for the past years. Good evening. Thank you for being with us here Thank at you. the TDM Talk Show. Um, I would start exactly by asking you about this process. Um, after six years of racing, the Canadrome has finally closed doors, uh, but it left behind more than 500 dogs with no adoptions uh, program settled. Can you tell us a little bit about, about this fight for this past years? Well, uh, we began uh, asking politely Canadrome in the beginning, in the, at the end of 2011, uh, and in 2012, March, uh, the director of the Inspection Bureau, uh, of Gaming Inspection Bureau, uh, decided to uh, facilitate a meeting between Anima and Canidrum for, for us to press Canidrum to have at least adoption programs, as all tracks in the world has. We have two meetings, very tough meetings, very difficult meetings, and uh, the result was zero. They didn't want to have any adoption program, and they even told that they prefer to have a relation with other association, which name I will not disclose, uh, instead of Anima. It's okay, so uh, we wait for the adoption. No adoption came, came out. We continue to force them and the government to have adoptions. Uh, and what happened, the adoption didn't come. So we decided that the only solution was to fight for the closing of Canadian. And during all those years, the, the, concession, the concession of the contract was being renewed, meanwhile. Yes, and uh, they expired in 2015, and after they were uh, uh, extended for one more year, 2016, and after two more years, 2018. And during this process, after Mainly uh, when the concession expires in 2015, we were asking the government to facilitate those adoptions, telling them that we need time to, to allocate all these animals and take three years until 2018 for us to be called to help Canidrum to make those adoptions. And we are the only association capable to do that, just not because we are the best association of Macau, for sure we are not but because we have a, a local uh, international partners that we try to, to get uh, in these three years, three, four years. Uh, the reason is we know that we are too small to handle so many animals. And so, you, you had to have contact with international organizations yes. to be uh, able to rehome this. Dog. Yes, I have been, uh, I think, nine to ten times outside Macau trying to build a network that is working very well and a very good network. We have adoption, adopters for more than 800 dogs. We were expecting 650, and as you know, in the two or three adoption that Canidum does, they just throw out to another something 20 animals. We were expecting to handle all these animals. So now we are helping them. And the environment between now, Anima, and Canidum is very good. Uh, yeah, you were mentioning the, the, the fight through all these years. The, we know that the, the relationship with Yat Yun was not, the, the Canon Jones companies, Yat Yun, uh, that was not always peaceful. You somehow managed to find a, a middle ground. Uh, was it hard to do that? And is that actually helping the dogs at this point? Yes. Uh, there, there was only one gentleman in Canidrum that created this mess. This, it was real very complicated guy. Even we had friends, common friends, that tried to facilitate the contact between us, but I believe they were expecting that the, the race industry will continue forever. And when they knew by the government that uh, no, we finish, they still, they could begin to do the process uh, faster in, in 2016, but they, they, uh, they didn't care about that, and that is the problem that we face now. Uh, but in the meantime, I think October, I don't remember last year, uh, we were called 
by a friend, a common friend of both parties, asking us to find an agreement. And from that time on, I have few talks with Angela and uh, the, her lawyer. Angela Long, who is yes, the head, Leon, the head yes. of the Union. And because I refused to have a, a talk with the, the chief executive of Canidum, and I never have a talk with the chief executive of Canidum except in those two meetings in March 2012. And everything ran very well. She was very open, and she told whatever. Uh, she decided with me, and so the program that we did for the International Reuming Center was not only decided by Anima, she agreed in all, and we just began to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, she, in order to facilitate the cooperation between both, she put two people uh, working with me uh, that is representing uh, Yatun, and everything is running very well. So, the so dogs I have no are, complaints against them. The dogs actually. are now going out. They're, they're, what's the role of the company now? They're paying for the, all of the expenses regarding the race? Yes, we, we, have, uh, we are three parties involved in that. IECM facilitating all the bureaucratic procedure and helping a lot. Yatun paying all the bills. Yatun is paying all the bills and also helping us. Helping us. And Anima uh, facilitating the adoption process and supervising, okay, organizing, uh, as uh, because when we arrived, Canidum, uh, the database was, uh, there was no proper database. There was some database, but we put that just uh, in a way that some, anybody can handle easily. And so uh, Canidum is paying a lot, it's just for have an idea. I believe Canidum will pay only in tickets to Europe and the United States around 15, to 18, 000, 18 million patakas. That's Europe and the United States are the places they are, they are uh, rehoming, where the dogs are going to. Um, and the dog Brooklyn, which was the, the face of the campaign, was lost for so many years, was on one of the, the, the dogs that you, you, uh, you used, let's say it like that, um, to the face of our close campaign. the face of the campaign. Um, he just arrived to the United States today. Uh, Brooklyn, I was not expecting to see him alive, but uh, this means that many of our requests to the Macau government was attended. Uh, why? Because I was not expecting to have animals with 12 years old. And this means if we take out the eight years of our fight, more or less six, seven years, those animals were four years old on that time. So it means the government real pressed them not to kill the animals. And Brooklyn uh, was one of those with Jack, an, uh, an Australian greyhound also, uh, are the faces of two campaigns, one in Australia and one in the United States. But Brooklyn was the major face of our first campaign. And I'm happy to see that Brooklyn is okay. Uh, he, had, he was retired because he got uh, an accident. One of his legs are not okay, but it's not so bad as many we have there. And uh, the point, it was when we asked them to, to facilitate the adoption and we asked the government to close Canino, is because we were aware of the accident rates of that track. It's too high international, by international standards. When we, op when we arrived, the Canino and the, uh, and the government took care, about 80% of the animals were considered in health category number one and number two, which are the worst. If we had the five, the category five, which is the oldest one, we have two or three percent more. So you see the situation of those animals were not good. So we, we also have in the canadrome, we had dogs that were too old to run, but they were still in cages and waiting kept. for... Mm -hmm. Yes, kept have you away. Have you ever thought through all these years of fighting uh, for the closing of the canadrome, have you ever thought of giving up? No, uh, I assume from the first, uh, well, I, I want to, to be honest on that. When in 2011, USA came, the Great UK USA came to pay a visit to me, and I still don't know why they pay a visit to me and should have had that association, and uh, I, I, I didn't believe what they told me. They told me a lot of uh, bad things about Canada. I told them, I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't know if it is true, but let me investigate. And after I begin to investigate, going to South China Morning Post news, and all these, uh, I could not enter. I entered in Canadian on that time, I could enter. 
but uh, the access to internal access was restricted. And I begin to see that it really was true. So I decide, I inform them, okay, I am on your side, let's do adoptions. And they agree with me that our goal was the adoption. But they refused the adoption so many times we asked. So, even on that time, we proposed that we pay part of the costs. We divided the same functions for Anima, the same function for Yatun. But the chief executive didn't want to do that. So they decided that they could do that their way. But they did not, nothing, and we have no other option than to close, to fight for closing the Canadian. The, the lack of our campaign has 370,000 mm -hmm. supporters. Mm -hmm. It was, I think, the biggest in the world. And, and the lack of intervention, although all those people were supporting the closing of the Canadrome, the, the lack of intervention of the government, could, can we say that it is related with the company's power in Macau? We all know it's related to, to uh, Mr. Stanley Ho's family, um, a big name in Macau that contributed to the community. Can yeah. we say that it's related to that? Maybe, maybe. Well, these are on the that, that time, these are powerful people. But I believe the government has an intervention. Otherwise, you don't find so many animals old there. So they didn't just didn't talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was not expecting a, to a find silent, so many. A silent intervention. Yes, it was a silent. They listened us. Maybe they didn't do exactly what we told. But uh, mainly at the end of 2015, they took too long to, to press Canidrum to to make the adoption program. So it was unnecessary to lose so much money mm -hmm. for them because other, we could get that money, but we need three years time to get so much money for putting all animals out. Now they are being totally responsible, paying all the bills. They even do not discuss the vet's bills. As, you, as I told, many of those animals are not in proper condition, health mm -hmm. conditions. Uh, well, they are not dying, some may be, but they are not okay. And the uh, United States accepted to receive them in Europe and take care of them because we have no time. We have few clinics that are capable to do that on, in, in, the, in, a, in a pace that the government wants us to, to do very fast. I believe everybody is working on to, to have May as the last animals in Canada. And how May. many dogs do we have now in the Canada? 300 in now. 300. Today, 10 went out, 5 to Italy and 5 to Chicago. So we have now only 300 dogs. And at the end of January, we should have around 270. Mm -hmm. We learned also today that the, uh, the company Yatun has paid uh, a fine to the government for more, more than 25 million patakas for the abandonment uh, of dogs. Um, can we say that th this fine is fair? Well, if I look to the past, I will tell that one guy was responsible for that. He should pay the fine. Uh, but you know, organization is like that. Uh, they have to be uh, re fully responsible for what happened. But for the cost they are having now, everything they pay, which will be 25 more million patakas, well, uh, I believe the, they should not pay now. Uh, this is my impression. I, I have nothing, I have no business with them. I, 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 I am not paid by them at all. But now that they assume the responsibility of sending all animals out, I still have some doubts that they abandoned. They tried the best way for them, their style, to put the animals out not our style. So when they told they want to send to China, we tell no. China has no laws. It's not because it's China. It has no laws for protecting mm -hmm. the animals. Even if we have good people there that cares about those animals, those animals cannot be pets in China. Majority of the, 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 the main cities do not allow greyhounds as pets. Zhuai do not allow, Shenzhen do not allow. So we have no many option then to block, and we blocked that. But now, regarding Yatyun, uh, I have serious doubt that they really abandoned the animals. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they did do what they should do in the, the first three years. They waited too long to, to uh, So to they, close they have chapter. to pay the bill now. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the situation about the Canadrome looks like it's finally having uh, going to coming to an end. But Anima, uh, your association, the association you preside, is 
still has a long way to go. You celebrated 15 years um, last it's month. An... And what's the situation with Anima at this point? Well, Anima is a big organization. Unfortunately, we are a big organization when we should be only a small organization. We have 30 something people working. We have a budget of 10 to 11 million. The government insists only to pay uh, uh, for 2019 in a budget of 11 million. The government will pay 3.8 million, which means is not creating any condition for any local people to replace me. And You're the, the, looking for a new president. Yes, I'm looking because, you know, I'm, I'm not many years as a board member because I think I am only executive board member uh, from 2007. And uh, I get five, eight years. I was the founder. I, f I follow up all the anima, I organize anima, but later, but never as board member, director. But when the last director, uh, president, uh, resigned, and ask me to handle, so I, I think should be my responsibility to find someone. But I, I never want to be the president of Anima. It's not because I, I cannot do it, it's because my life is more complicated. Happily, uh, I, I had some time free to handle, otherwise I could not do it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we have to have a president, a new president, it should be a local people. And uh, I have If that person many doesn't show up, what, what is your plan to, what Anima intends to do in regards to the work that you guys are doing? Well, uh, I, I am on the board until the end of 2019, until March 2020, we should have elections. And my goal is to prepare someone and to have a, a very tough talk with the government to tell them you cannot. Uh, you have to support Anima because, unfortunately, Anima is the only association that has a land, only association that build a building, and has three, and those three canals, and is the only one which is properly organized. And still waiting for another land, correct? The same land. The same land. To be a definitive it was concession. And you wanted yes, to. but the idea was that land we build the second part of Anima and to, and to make that part a community area for the kids to be there and play with the animals and facilitate all the adoption because I believe that with the new law, uh, this law of 2016, uh, we have possibility of reducing reduce the animals. It still is happening, not as fast as I want, but is happening and slowly Anima should shrink, but uh, I, I still don't see that at the moment. And dogs and cats keep coming to Anima. You have hundreds of dogs and cats under your roof. Um, and the, the, the adoption of, of animals, is, is it still a problem here? Do yeah. people still prefer to buy from shops? Yes, and that is one of the reasons why I have a proposal for this year to have a talk to the LegCo. I already talked to the president of ACM just a uh, very uh, a simple talk, and I believe IACM can support us. We are rescuing, in 2016, we rescue around almost 500 cats and around 200 dogs. And uh, this year, uh, 2018, uh, 2017, and now 2018, 2018, we rescue around 300 cats and around 200 dogs again. And the rate of, uh, of adoption is less than half. So means... What's missing for, for this rate to increase? It's people to adopt. People prefer to real to buy. Cats are easily to, to adopt. Dogs is more difficult because we only rescue animals in risk. And majority of those animals, only big arts can adopt them, except if they are puppies. So we have animals living with us from the first beginning until they die because it's one of our principles not to kill. And we do not do it like the SPCAs of Hong Kong or other countries that uh, kill the animals because they make a choice, okay? It's, uh, we don't do that choice. Is youngest one should be adopted, so we need space for them. The other one, we euthanize. We don't do that. We do euthanasia when they are in suffer only. 
the the lack of the 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 lack of regulation regarding the pet shops that sell many times they sell uh, animals that come across the border. Do you think the, a better regulation of these shops could help ease the burden? Yes. There are no regulation for pet shops, no regulation for vets, no regulation for clinics, no regulation for breeders. There are no regulation at all. IACM is preparing just for, uh, I know that one or two years before, they are preparing regulation for covering all these areas. Uh, will be good because worse than this one is impossible. And what happened is uh, pet shops, for instance, sell whatever animals even uh, with age below three months. Nobody in, 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 you, in you, Europe or any other advanced country uh, do that anymore. And even in, for instance, in, I know that uh, in the UK now they cannot sell animals below eight months. And uh, we are now proposing IACM to do just like uh, some countries are doing. Okay, they want the business, okay, they have the business, but they sell stray animals. We provided the stray animals to them. They handle, they put them beautiful, and they sell the animals, the profit is for them. Uh, I was uh, told, uh, I will not disclose by somebody, okay, in a, in, a, in a transitional period, we can ask them, okay, you sell one, you buy one, you can sell one stray and, uh, in, 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 in the same rate. Buy one and sell another one, stray animal. Okay, uh, I, I want to have a talk with uh, our legislative council to explain to them that we are a small town. There is no way for us to have more animals. And this cannot be only a business. This is only, we, uh, you know, I, I respect the rights of animals, but we cannot have more animals here. So it should be limited the amount yes, of animals sure, they sell to sure. pet shops. So we, we want them to be properly regulated. The, the, the welfare of animals and what you're mentioning, the, the lack of regulations and laws, the, the, the law uh, bill for, for the veterinarians is still being, um, is still under, under works. And there's a bill for the protection of animals since 2016, 2017 became um, effective. It has been helping to ease these problems with the welfare of animals in Macau? Yeah, he, the effects we begin to see slowly, uh, it's not a perfect law. We, uh, we support them for sure, but we were against some of the decisions that were there. And we were the only association to see that we are, you know, uh, maybe we are loved by the government, but maybe we are also hated by the government. We refuse to go to the Legislative Council when they ask all associations to go there to explain the law. So they never listen to us, and they want us to go there to shop that that law is good. And Anima was the only association with me that refused, no way. And why was that? Because they didn't do exactly what we want. They didn't, re they refused, they didn't refuse, but they never want to talk to us about the law. They think that they are illuminated. They are not in the field they don't know anything about animals, and some stupid ideas came to there, just like why uh, some, the dogs has to have a microchip, and in a place where there are more cats than dogs, and few people knows that, the cats, may majority of cats, are not even abandoned, are lost, and uh, people lo lose the animals, and the animals uh, are, not, are incapable to find the families. And we told them, put a microchip, because if the animal has to go out, to Portugal, to Europe, to any other country, they have to have a microchip. What is the problem? There was even a local association that said, oh, this is cruelty, a microchip in a car, oh, cannot be, you know, stupidity that exists everywhere. Another issue that I, I recall you mentioning at the time of the, that the law was being made was the, the, the fact that people that are owners that own animals, pets, can, they can abandon them in a kennel and they're not fined for that. So if this bill had to be, uh, would be the subject of a revision, what would be the main issues that you think it would have to change? Uh, I think the concept of the law itself has to change because we, uh, we study a lot of laws and we saw that uh, the main topic of the law is, should be cruelty. And they should have two kinds of cruelty uh, active cruelty and passive cruelty, which different fines. And abandonment is cruelty. 
treat an animal bad is cruelty. Abandon uh, uh, all the other cases that uh, is there in the law is a confusion, is very confused the concept. So if they do this way, it's very easy for us to, to, be, to find them and with a, uh, a way that the, the worst situation should be highly fine. And uh, for instance, it, it, it has no sense that uh, I have a dog that lived with me five years or a cat, and I decide, okay, today I don't want them. Okay, I see them, take the, the dog, and I have not fine at all. And the uh, next day you might go and buy another one. Another one, and go there and register there. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, this is, uh, has no sense. So we were totally against that against that situation, because we think that abandonment is, doesn't matter where they are abandoned. If they are abandoned, you know, the IACM is not abandoned. I understand the point of IACM on that time. They, what they don't want is the, the animals to be abandoned on in the, the streets. Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, and they are only concerned with the, the dogs, when all animals should be. This should apply to all animals, including the cats. Rabies, for instance, one no sense of the law was, you know, we are in a rabies area. Macau is not, but China it is. And the rabies can uh, be delivered by cats and dogs. Why only dogs are fascinated? There's no sense. So if there is a, a rabies flow in Macau, on that time I told, do I see and think that they go to the homes of the elder people and take the, the cats and do kill the cats and dogs just like they kill the, the birds? No way, they will have a big fight. So it's just a question of good sense. I believe that with this experience of three years, IACM now can make these changes and improve the law. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the law that we were talking about, the Protection of Animals law, uh, Bill, was, uh, became effective in 2017 in China, in mainland China, it was way before that. But when people talk about China, the, and even Southeast Asia, the, the idea is that this is a a hell, a nightmare for animals. In your opinion, is still uh, is this reality, or is there a misconception about what's really going on in China regarding the animals? Well, maybe we have in some areas uh, the two situations, and in other areas one of them. There are uh, areas where they have laws. Uh, Shenzhen has laws for protecting animals. There are Shanghai, yes, also. But the majority of the, there is no a general law for all the country. And for sure there are many problems regarding, uh, uh, the, uh, regarding the uh, meat trade uh, with animals. But we have also, in, we had, now we don't have, in uh, South Korea, we had in uh, Indonesia, and we have in other countries, even we have in Switzerland. They can eat dogs in one of the cantons in Switzerland. So, I understand the point, uh, uh, but the, the problem also exists in Europe. You go to South Europe, you see uh, illegal racing of dogs, hunting, uh, the abandoned the animals in very bad shape, and you have also the same there. And we uh, still have people fighting also for the rights of animals yes, in this yes. side of the world. So this is a, a general problem that we cannot try to to tell that this is a Chinese problem. Yes, in China, this is a problem, but it's a problem also in Portugal, it's a problem also in Spain, it's a problem also in Argentina, it's a problem in many countries. The point is, only us can solve the problem. I cannot solve the problems in mainland China, only the Chinese in mainland China. And I tell you, when we did the first campaign for closing the Canadrum, we got more than 120 Chinese organizations, mainland China, supporting us. Um, recently, we've learned that Japan uh, has resumed, resumed the commercial whaling. There's still a rise of consumption of shark's fin, and many industries still use parts of the animal, including medicine. WWF, uh, in a recent report, mentioned that we wiped out, humanity wiped out 60% of the animals. Can we revert the situation? It's, yes, we can, but it takes time because this is an education problem. I think uh, people, uh, when the money is more strong than the rationality, we have this problem. And unfortunately, we have people in the companies that only think about money. Money, money, money. 
and not about the environment, and animals are part of our environment, not about humans, and for sure not about the, the, uh, the, the nature itself. So we are being the main responsible for the situation in our planet, and we are thinking that we can survive alone without the other species is totally wrong. And we are killing all. You see the plastics in the oceans. Majority of the oceans are full of plastics, killing animals. And we are going to a situation that uh, uh, I should like to tell as a politician, because uh, I believe that politics is the only way to change this planet. We need to have people, leaders in all our nations that are capable to join people join the nature and join the animals in only one common goal. And we are not on that, still are not on that uh, uh, level, unfortunately. And we all think that uh, we should look to the humans first and forget the other ones, forgetting that all of us are in the same network, same link, and if breaks in one side, will break against us also. So let's hope that changes in the future. Mr. Martins, thank you so much thank for you. being with us. Um, that's all the time we got for tonight. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with more TDM Talk Show.